Hello there, everybody. And today we will be building a calendar come weather application. Now, I find this pretty interesting as I really had a fun time building this view. And let's just hit right into it. It's going to be a very basic concepts of Kinta to build the GUI, uh, let's say, background and uh, some other basic new stuff, uh, some APIs coming into play. So let's let's just see how we can go about it. So, of course, we need Kinta. I just want you all to go along as to how I'm explaining because I'll be going through each and every line as usual. OK, so Kinta is necessary and the new let's say library out here is TK calendar, which makes our life so much more simpler by just importing it. You need to pip install it. All right. Or conda install, depending on your IDE. And uh, you just import it and you basically get a calendar up and ready for you. Pretty. You can beautify it as and how you want it. We'll be doing that here today too. Uh, we'll come to their exact usage points as and how we go along with the flow. Firstly, let's concentrate on calendar. After you're done importing it and you create the root, you instantiate it, give it a title, give it a geometry, as you can see. What you need to do is, let me show you all the GUI first. I'll try and explain simultaneously. I guess you all can see the code and the like half of the API uh, app too. So firstly, what I want to do is inside a variable date, I am extracting today's date. So this text out here in the green box that you see, it gets updated every single day that you run it. Okay. okay so it's dynamic and I take datetime dot datetime dot now. So it basically gives me the year, month, day and all of that. So what I'm doing is I'm extracting it, it into three parts. That is the year, month and the day. Why? I'll come to that. And also, I will be taking the name of the day, that is a weekday, Monday, Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, anything, through date dot string format time. And to that, you pass a percentage A. All right. And that's it for now. That's what this entire area does. Now, what you want to do is I have just put in a background image. These two lines act for the background image, lines 18 and 19. Now let's actually come to the calendar part. That is this one. Okay. This has been beautified and prettified a little bit. You can go in and add all the colors and stuff that you want. So basically I will try and attach the link to the calendar uh, documentation. You all can refer to that and make changes and amendments according to your choice. All right. Let me minimize this for now. All right. So what calendar parameters say is inside a variable, you say calendar. And to that, you, of course, have to pass root because you want it on your UI. And you say select mode is equal to day because we want today's day selected. And I am taking date pattern is equal to day, day month and year. All right. This, this needs to be four Y. Sorry. All right. Now, uh, what you need to do is you have to uh, give in as to what which date do you want to be selected. So I need today's date to be selected. And you remember we took Y, M, M and D out here. That was the exact reason why we did that up there. So I take year is equal to Y, month is equal to M and day is equal to D. You could also have done month is equal to zero one, year is equal to 2021 and all. Of. By the way, happy new year. <laughs> all right. So... That's how you can do it. And this is the entire styling part. All right. You're given the background, foreground. And what I've done is select foreground, select background. You all can go and read all of that. I will be attaching the link to that. So this is the entire styling part. And then you go ahead and place it onto your app. Now what I'm doing is to date, again, I'm basically overwriting it, calendar.getDate. What get date does is it basically selects whichever date has been highlighted in this case. For today, it is the second Saturday. Now, since we said the date pattern has to be D, D, M, M, and Y, 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 what you, it basically returns um, the date to you in that format via the get date function. Next, what you do is, um, I'm just simply displaying a text that is today is into a label, this one right out here. And into another label, what I do is for this one, the green one out here, I'm simply saying root. OK, you need to do that. And I'm simply putting in the weekday that we extracted up here. 
okay the weekday that we extracted up here i've given in a comma and the date we got via the calendar in this statement all right so i'm basically basically concatenating that and giving giving the styling that's necessary or however you wish okay so basically i get this comma and the space and all of that now that our calendar is done and we have basically made the background and the left side of our GUI, let's come to the interesting part of APIs. Now, what do these APIs do? It's basically you are changing your application using some information that is being extracted, dynamic real-time data that you're extracting through some ready-made uh, files or data provided to you, JSON files, XML files, and all of that. Okay, now what I want you all to do is go and give Open Weather Map. It's a pretty, pretty nice website. I really enjoyed it. And uh, this will help us get our current weather because that's the second part of our application, right? Go ahead and hit in the second link that you get out here. Now, one of the first most important points is that you must log in to it. Okay, it's a very, very easy step. Go ahead and give your mail ID and your uh, passwords. And when you do that, what you get is a, an API key for yourself. Okay, so if let me go ahead and see if I can show this to you all. Okay, the, you have all of this uh, stuff. And uh, when you go ahead and click on API keys, you will get one for yourself. It's unique to yours and you can change it as many times as you want. Keep this very, very safe because you want it for your purpose. Okay, that's one of the main things. Now, after you've logged in and everything, go to API. Okay, select the API option. And from there, you will get current weather data. This is what we want and it's provided to us for free. They are so, so generous. And you go and select API doc. From there, you will get the exact link that you need to put into your code to extract your uh, weather data. So all you need to select the first one out here, we'll be using that. So I'll be taking in the city name and your API key. So go ahead and put this same link into a new tab and change the city name and put in your API key in its place. So I am just kept this one ready for you. This is one of uh, India's city that is Kolkata. If you can see it up here, it's Kolkata and I've given in my uh, API key. And there you go, you have a JSON data route here and you get uh, various key value pairs and we'll be using this haze and uh, the description of it, the humidity and the temperature and all of that. Okay, now the temperature in here is in Kelvin, so we need to modify that a little bit, but never mind. Let's go ahead to back to the code now. I hope you all got that. And let me come down here. Don't be afraid of all oh, so much of lines of code is just repetitive stuff going on. So what I want to do is uh, I want to take in the input from the user. Okay, so I get um, an entry box wherein the user types the city name and then I've created a button that says check the weather. On clicking this button, okay, you basically go up here to the find weather function. Before that, let me just show this to you. In the button command, I have created a lambda, okay? Uh, basically, the function find weather requires a parameter, hence lambda. So I pass in whatever the user has selected via entry.get, okay? This was all simple and nice. Now let us put in our link, okay? To the link, remember the one that we added uh, in here, go ahead and copy this one. And what you want to do is paste it in here, but just, just concentrate for now. What I want you to do is first put in your app ID, okay, your key, and then the city name. In this case, it's basically the opposite. It's first city, then uh, key. I want you to make it first key and then the uh, city, all right? Why? Because we need to concatenate the city name to this link, right? So you go ahead and put in link plus city into data. So that will concatenate it. And now you need to get the JSON file or the JSON data. So what you say is info is equal to request. Remember we had taken import, import requests. So request.get to that pass your data. That is the entire link, including the city.json. Now that you have the entire data inside info, I have basically extracted values. So weather info one takes in info of weather. Now what all is info of weather giving me? Look, you have info of weather out here, and it basically gives me this entire list. Let me enlarge in this. Does it work? Anyway, so this entire list basically is given to me. And from that, I extract the main and the description. So what I do is you basically, since this is a list, you have to say info one of zero, 
okay whether in info one or zero of description and i'm basically capitalizing the description because that's what i want to print i'm going to go ahead and type this to you because it'll be way more easier for you to understand in that case so i've given in kolkata and i'll say check the weather okay and this is how it basically looks so let's see i told you i need the description so i'm putting in the description down here in this label okay uh, so i take the description into one variable next i want the weather info to to be info of mean okay now what is mean uh, come out here and and and, and where's mean where's mean can anybody see mean ah there's mean this mean consists of the temperature which is what i need so i'm extracting the temperature and the humidity from the main key now you do that and you store mean and temp the values of mean and temp into weather info 2 and temperature now after you done with that remember it was in kelvins so put in the formula this is the formula quickly go ahead and note it down into centigrades first and fahrenheit we'll be providing both to the user as user friendly as you can possibly make it and also we need humidity temperature and humidity from mean and you go ahead and store all of this in the variable pause the video note this down next what i want you all to do is inside weather info go and put this entire formatting okay where uh, i'll just go in ahead and explain this to you weather then you put the variable name of description then give new line slash and slash and then temperature put in those two variables then give a new line again humidity and give this variable name again okay again if you want it want go ahead pause the video and note this down okay hoping you all are done with it now i'm basically creating a text box a label would be just as fine i don't know what i was thinking in creating a text box out here anyway this is a multi line uh, right okay, okay okay this is a multi line text hence you i chose a text box here so go ahead and give the text as your weather info variable whatever a statement that you created and after placing the text box you say text dot insert you first given the parameter end we have seen this in our calculator video and then you pass in the data to be printed that is weather info now that you're done with that all you have to do is according to whatever weather is there currently for an example in this case it's a haze okay so what i've done is i've gone ahead and checked various cities so i've got smoke then mist haze for that i've gone in and put in a single picture for that see we get this picture out here i'll be providing all the pictures to you so that your life becomes way more easier so what you do is if weather info of 1 of 0 of main is equal to equal to smoke main is basically one of the elements of the list weather okay so after you're done with that you just keep checking if else if else if and on and on and on so and accordingly you simply put in the image okay please note these three lines they're very very crucial otherwise you might not get the image okay now that you're done with that for smoke mist and haze i've put in one picture else if the weather is clouds and inside that i've given in another case that if it is broken clouds or scattered clouds showing just a few clouds otherwise if it's uh, heavy clouds that is if it's overcast clouds put in another picture just keep copy pasting that's all you have to do else if weather if it's clear you can put in a nice uh, bright sun all right else if if it's rain or drizzle put in a rain picture snow a snow picture snowing picture and thunderstorm you put in thunderstorm and that's basically it go ahead and copy all of this keep copy pasting and changing the names that's all you have to do and there you go you have made your own weather and calendar application let's go ahead and run this okay i have this open i'll go ahead and show this to you all out here itself you can go ahead and format it as and how you all want it let's try out mumbai that's another city okay it's still haze out here but you see a change in the temperature and humidity let's try out california okay because since it has a really great database okay this is overcast overcast clouds you see the picture changes everything else changes what what else can we think of columbus let's try out columbus uh huh all right i hope the spelling is correct okay there's light intensity drizzle out here all right and that's basically it i i hope i could make this as interesting as possible for you all go ahead and try this out if you all have any doubts please post them in the comment section i'll try and solve them as quickly as i can okay i really hope you all enjoy it bye bye i'll see you all soon